Hollywood power players are taking aim at NBC over the high-profile departure of Gabrielle Union. The reality show judge was reportedly fired from America's Got Talent after she complained about racism. I'll tell you how crazy this is. America's Got Talent is a huge ratings hit produced by Simon Cowell, and Gabrielle Union was one of its star judges until two weeks ago. According to Variety, Union, who is best known for her roles in Bring It On and Bad Boys 2, was allegedly told her hairstyles were too black for the show's audience and other criticism about her appearance. She also reportedly urged producers to report a joke Jay Leno allegedly made about dogs and Korean food during a segment that was later cut. Leno's office made no comment. There's been online backlash to her firing from celebrities including Ariana Grande and Deborah Messing, and Ellen Pompeo tweeted, workplace cultures will continue to be toxic until there is unity and solidarity among all women. Source after source is saying there is a systemic cultural problem. That's journalist Ronan Farrow, who's been accusing NBC of workplace toxicity for years now, speaking out on The View this week. Past hosts of the show, Sharon Osbourne and Howard Stern, weighed in and made news too. He has set it up that the men stay, no matter how old they are, no matter how fat they are, no matter how ugly they are. It is a boys club. Yes. Okay, it is. The advocacy group, Time's Up, also leapt in, accusing NBC Universal of protecting powerful men and punishing women who speak out. Union has not addressed the allegations publicly, but this week she tweeted, we had a lengthy five-hour and what I thought to be productive meeting yesterday. I led with transparency and my desire and hope for real change. NBC has issued a joint statement with Simon Cowell's production company saying, we remain committed to ensuring a respectful workplace for all employees and take very seriously any questions about workplace culture. NBC has begun an investigation and the Screen Actors Guild has too. Joining me now from Los Angeles is the reporter who broke this story for Variety, Matt Donnelly. So, Matt, you know, at, at CBC, we like to independently verify any story before going with it, but Union, she hasn't gone public with any of those allegations, uh, and yet you reported it. How were you able to report it? How, how do you know that this is true? So for our initial story about Gabrielle's concerns and the overall culture at America's Got Talent, I spoke to as many as 10 people in and around the set uh, and close to the production and to the talent. So we were very confident in the amount of individuals that we were able to corroborate certain things with. Um, and that's on the accusation level and also on the overall tempo of, of the experience of the past season that ultimately led to Gabrielle and Julianne Huff um, being fired. So it appears there's a certain fear of speaking out about this. Mm -hmm. Why why would people be afraid? I think overall, despite you know big movements in Hollywood like the Me Too movement and look at even what's currently happening with Harvey Weinstein, there's still an overall culture of silence because people want to maintain their careers uh, and also not face litigation. And a lot of these very powerful content companies like NBC Universal have armies of lawyers. In the case of Gabrielle Union, per our reporting, she was almost instantly branded difficult when she when she first started complaining and speaking up about what she perceived as insensitivity and injustice on set. She was immediately seen as sort of a headache for producers, uh, based on multiple conversations we have with our sources. Why do you think this is taking off now? What? Why? Why now? Why her? I think it's a it's a great question. I think so let's let's start with Gabrielle. I think that she is someone who obviously has been a prolific film and television actress and and as a budding um, power producer in Hollywood. Uh, you know, she's she's a symbol for so many people uh, of underrepresented communities. She's a very powerful self-employed woman. She's a woman of color. Uh, you know, she's married to one of the biggest basketball stars in the world um, who are very active on social media. So I think they have a lot of fans. But more about sort of the brand that Gabrielle represents and the one she's built for herself is one of outspokenness. It's one of standing up for people who might not have a voice or a platform. It's about representing minorities in Hollywood, which Hollywood is, you know, sort of historically bad at. Um, and I think that the sort of the overall essence of her complaints are really just st are, were just standing up for the human dignity of people on the show. Um, you know, one of the things that came up consistently in my reporting is that NBC and producers of the show, which includes Simon Cowell's company, felt that any sort of um, upsetting moments or, or any sort of um, offensive material could always just be edited out of the show, and that was the quick fix. But for people like Gabrielle and some of her coworkers who consistently spoke out, it was more than that. It was about having a safe and dignified workplace no matter where the show or when it aired.
We've heard over the last few years, anyway, a lot of uh, stories or complaints about underrepresentation in Hollywood, but this is about mm. TV, about reality TV. What is it about reality TV that may add to this? When it comes to reality competition formats, it's not like scripted material where you can, you know, you know, write a great series and then the world gets hooked and you can perpetuate that. For, for something unscripted like reality, uh, you have a lot of an, an old guard of people that are typically white men who are sort of at the top of those power systems looking at ratings and looking at demographics and, and sort of really deciding and controlling what they think that the mass audience wants to see. And while, you know, no broadcast show is as highly rated as it used to be, you know, before the advent of streaming services, America's got talent was rating in the 13, 10 million range. That's a lot of people. It's a lot of ad dollars. So I think that there's a lot at stake. Um, but yeah, I, I think also with the, the general flavor of those shows are, are, can be very pageanty. So I think that there are certain expectations for women in that programming as well. It, what I did report through uh, multiple sources was that the producers of America's Got Talent felt that, it, that the, her hairstyles were too confusing for a mass audience, which a few of those sources read to mean a white audience. And there is a perception, um, at least from my sources, there's a perception at the show that that was confusing for a mass audience, which Gabrielle and a lot of people found to be racist. So if this is not just offensive but out of date, is, is, <laughs> is the message getting through? <laughs> I think the message is very clear to NBC now. I think if you see the incredible reaction and support for Gabrielle for, for addressing and demanding that these complaints be addressed um, within her workplace and also maybe help educate audiences and, and her social media followers as to why they're problematic, um, I think NBC is certainly waking up to that fact as we speak.